Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the controversies from week 9. I'm a horse, Simon Borg. We start with Sunday's match in Houston where there was a very interesting play in the 38th minute. You see here how Dynamo goalkeeper Tally Hall clearly fouls Atiba Harris in the box. But referee Juan Guzman either doesn't see the foul or he plays the advantage and Colorado's Danny Mwanga doesn't capitalize. Now, common practice is that advantage is not called in the penalty area. But let's say advantage was called. The rules say that the referee would not be able to go back and call the penalty kick after giving the advantage. And in this case, Guzman would also not be able to issue a red card after the fact for denial of a goal scoring opportunity. Hall's captain Brad Davis saw red in second half stoppage time. Just minutes after getting a yellow card for dissent, Davis gets a straight red for a reckless challenge on Colorado's Nate Sturgis. No doubt about it. Only one play to look at in Toronto. In the 29th minute, Brandon Barklage applies this reckless studs-up tackle on Hogan Ephraim. That was a definite yellow and borderline red for endangering the safety of his opponent. But no card was issued by referee Jorge Gonzalez. Staying in Canada, one of the turning points in the Montreal-Chicago match was the red card to Jeff Lorenowitz for denial of a goal-scoring opportunity. After the game, Lorenowitz himself admitted there was contact with Andrea Pisanu. But does Pisano even have a clear look at a shot on goal? No way! To me, it's practically 50-50 ball with the goalkeeper, and the foul did not warrant a red card from referee Fotis Bazakos. Credit Bazakos, however. After originally awarding the PK, he correctly consults with his assistant and awards the free kick outside the box. Moving to LA and the Galaxy's second goal in the 13th minute. In the build-up to the goal, there looks to me to be a clear handball committed by Marcelo Sarvis right in front of assistant referee Brian Poschel. But Poschel does well to keep his flag down on the final pass. Remember that just last week, I thought Sarvis was guilty of another handball in the build-up to LA's goal against Sporting Kansas City. And now to Chivas San Jose, where there's plenty to chew on. First, in the 32nd minute, Tristan Bowen gets away with a dangerous studs-up tackle on Steven Leonard, and referee Mark Geiger doesn't even call a foul or issue a card. That's a red card every day of the week for me. But back to Leonard, who was in the middle of things again in the lead-up to a 65th minute free kick. Before the ball is delivered into the box, he shoves Jose Correa to the ground. Enough for a talking to from the referee. Lenhardt is always playing on the edge. Here's his encounter with Chivas USA's Mario De Luna, and Lenhardt gets a good chunk of the Chivas player on the follow-through. It's within the limits of the play, in my opinion, and in fact, no foul or card were issued by the referee. But San Jose's manager, Frank Yallop, didn't seem to appreciate the play, and he yanks Lenhardt from the game just moments later. Next to Gillette Stadium, where plenty took place in the 90th minute with the revs up 2-0. First, New England's Chris Tierney comes in with this tackle on Philly Sebastian the two. It's late, reckless, and endangers the safety of his opponent, but he doesn't even get a yellow card. In my opinion, it should have seen a red. We're not done. Revs manager Jay Heaps was incensed after this Michael Farfan challenge on rookie Andrew Farrell. But from my standpoint, I see nothing wrong with this. Farfan tries to get in front of Farrell, and sure, it should have been a foul, but nothing more. I also agree with referee Ricardo Salazar's red card decision in Vancouver, where Jackson swings his right arm into the face of Alain Rochat. No doubt about it. Jackson can expect the emotional intelligence speech from coach Shellis Heinemann later this week. One player who should have seen red was Columbus defender Glauber, who got away with just a yellow from referee Soren Stoika on this play. But to me, he clearly pulls down DC's Leonard Pahoy, who was breaking an on goal. That's denial of a goal scoring opportunity and worthy of an ejection. But DC have an even greater gripe from this game. DC's Perry Kitchen scores what looks to be the equalizer in the 23rd minute, but we're not clear what the infraction on this play is. Kitchen is not offside, and the referee doesn't raise his hand as he would if it were an offside. It also doesn't look like Kitchen committed a foul. That goal should have stood in my opinion. It was not a good day for DC. They conceded a penalty kick to the crew just before halftime. DC defender Brandon McDonald nudges the crew's Haido Arieta from behind and clips his leg. The referee was right there. Good call. Then in second half stoppage time, McDonald's replacement Ethan White looks to take down Eddie Gavin in the box. But we don't have a replay or a good angle on that one. The crew would win the game 3-zip. That's all we have for this week. I'll be back in full voice next time.